You're tuned in to another episode of The Coaching Lounge with your host, Rebecca Gordon, lead life coach at SatelliteLifeCoaching.com. Listen to interviews with creative thinkers, motivational speakers, models of success and key people of influence. Tune in, relax, engage and transform your life now. Despite having a good night's rest, do you wake up still fatigued? Do you feel as if you're battling exhaustion as you go through the day? No matter how balanced your diet or regular your workout regime, do you still pile on the pounds and find it a struggle to shift the weight? Today, I have an expert in the coaching lounge who will help to shed some light on a very common health issue that many people unknowingly suffer with. My name is Rebecca Gordon. I'm your host for today and I'm joined by Dr. Gil Kajiki, who is the founder of the Valley Thyroid Institute. Dr. Kajiki joins me all the way from California, um, Los Angeles. However, in his work as a certified functional medicine practitioner and a chiropractor for 30 years, he works with people all over the world. Dr. Kajiki has patients who he treats from California, despite them living in countries such as Romania, New Zealand, London, Canada, Miami, New York and Sacramento. And amongst the other things that we'll discuss with Dr. Kajiki in terms of the realm of his practition, he focuses on um, supporting people, helping people who are suffering with thyroid issues and autoimmune conditions. So let me just tell you the reason for the show today. For many years, I've been suffering. (laughs) I've been suffering with symptoms such as swollen feet. Um, I've had a lot of um, tiredness, um, feeling quite foggy, feeling quite depressed. And although I'm very good at self-healing because I do research, I was on Facebook one day and an article caught my eye. And through following through with the, the research, I actually realized that the symptoms I had related to hypothyroidism. And consequently, I've over a period of months now been able to get myself back to a good state of equilibrium due to putting into practice um, some of the things that Dr. Kajiki will share with us today, um, as well as other um, self-healing techniques that um, are actually working very well for me. So just to give you a little bit of background as to why I've chosen Dr. Kajiki as my expert today. Dr. Kajiki has been interviewed by several radio stations for his unique Kajiki thyroid protocol. And he um, spoke about some alternative options to thyroid care other than medication. And that's something that I really want to drill down into this um, interview with Dr. Kajiki today. Um, I'm going to let Dr. Kajiki explain about his work at the Valley Institute. Um, Dr. Kajiki, welcome to the Coaching Lounge. Thank you, Rebecca. I, I understand it's late evening there, but it's early afternoon here in Los Angeles, so Absolutely. thank you for staying up late. <laughs> You're quite welcome. Yes, there's an eight-hour time difference. However, this show is so important that even if it was, you know, in the early hours of the morning, I just make sure I accommodate, you know, um, your time difference there in Los Angeles. And um, let's just get into the interview because there are many, many questions to ask you. The very first question, Dr. Kajiki, is what got you started working with thyroid patients? Well, I have I've been a chiropractor for 30 years, and, and I, when I first started, I practiced the traditional method of chiropractic, musculoskeletal work, neck pain, back pain, headaches, scoliosis, you know, basically musculoskeletal conditions. 
Well, my wife um, started having problems with her health about 13, 14 years ago. And what ended up happening was she came home from a business trip one day. She was a, a, a corporate HR executive. And what started to happen was that uh, she got sick, what we thought was a cold, uh, turned into a flu. And then that flu, she started to develop symptoms of Epstein-Barr. So we had gotten her tested and we found that she did in fact have Epstein-Barr. So she started feeling the symptoms of Epstein-Barr like fatigue and just run down, unable to sleep, poor appetite. Well, those symptoms never got better. And those symptoms started turning into other types of symptoms like hair loss and weight gain and alternating digestive problems, constipation, loose stools. She started getting depression, dry hair, dry nails. Then she started getting heart palpitations and insomnia. And this went on for a number of years uh, to the point to where we started going to different doctors and the doctors were all telling us uh, her blood tests are normal. And well, you know, what do you expect? You're a, a high corporate executive. You have two teenage daughters. Uh, of course, you're having this stress. And that's pretty much what it is. And, you know, you're just going to have to get through this period in your life. Mm. So, I'm sure your listeners have heard that same story. <laughs> over well, I mean, it's very personal to me because um, when I had particular symptoms, um, went to the doctor, had quite a lot of tests, you know, even went to the hospital. And um, as you've said, everything's normal. <laughs> you know, most things were normal. Um, Epstein-Barr, you've mentioned. Um, what exactly is that, please? It is, it's a virus that is many, many people are expo us exposed to it. 90% of the population, if given a test for Epstein-Barr, 90% of the population has been exposed to that Epstein-Barr. So it's no surprise that somebody has a past exposure. However, not that many people have active Epstein-Barr virus in their system. Okay. So is that something that precedes um, thyroid problems? Um, you know, I, I'm going to say that it's very common, but I'm not going to say that it's necessary. Right. Okay. Okay. So what I um, described in my introduction were some of the um, symptoms that I had that actually, as you've quite rightly um, described yourself, um, these can be passed off as, you know, other illnesses or relating to stress and so forth. And what I was told that going through the menopause being perimenopausal was the reason why or one of the main factors as to why I felt the way I was feeling and to why I had all these swellings and so forth. But um, what I've since understood is that there are some symptoms which can actually be blurred with other um, illnesses, if you like. But I'd like you as an expert, Dr. Kajiki, to just um, highlight some of the common signs and symptoms that um, do demonstrate that someone may have a thyroid problem, please. Right. Okay. So all the symptoms that we had just described, uh, hair loss, weight gain, night sweats, uh, alternating digestive problems, uh, depression, heart palpitations, those are all different types of thyroid symptoms. However, there are body dysfunctions that I describe as triggers. Now, triggers are very tricky because triggers are body dysfunctions that mimic a thyroid problem but isn't really a thyroid problem. So all those symptoms we just mentioned, those can be triggers such as anemia, blood sugar instability, adrenal gland dysfunction, hormone imbalance, gastrointestinal problems, inflammation, food sensitivities, chemical sensitivities, hidden stealth infections. So if you take those group of triggers and think about all the different symptoms that come from those triggers, they sound exactly like thyroid. Absolutely. And thyroid sounds exactly like those triggers. Right, okay. At this point, it's actually probably well worth um, explaining, please, why, um, where the thyroid is, first of all, and why it's so important in the whole, in the whole body um, function and system. Okay. So the, the thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland that is located just in the, in the front of your throat, just above your sternum and below your chin. 
this thyroid gland, though, is so important because it lets out a hormone, thyroid hormone, and every cell in the body contains a thyroid receptor site for this hormone. So think of it like a little thyroid garage for right. a thyroid hormone. And every cell in your body has a thyroid receptor site. So no other gland in the body has a thyroid receptor site on every single cell. So in order for your thyroid hormone to get to different parts of your body, it has to travel through your bloodstream through what we call a binding protein, which is what we think is a taxi cab. Okay. And then it has to get to these different cells. Well, imagine if every cell in your body has a thyroid receptor site or a little thyroid garage, when your thyroid starts to go awry and dysfunction, every part of your body now is up for dysfunction as well. Mm, interesting. So it plays a crucial and integral role in, um, you know, the whole system, really. And there is a difference then. There's a distinction between the um, low metabolism, hyperthyroidism and hyperthyroidism. How does one distinguish what exactly they, they, they might be suffering from? Right. Well, the only accurate way of knowing whether you have hyperthyroid or hypothyroid is through lab tests. You can go by symptoms because the symptoms of hypothyroid are different than hyper. Now hypothyroid, we talked about all those different symptoms like think of slow body. So you have weight gain, you have sluggishness, you have uh, fatigue. Hyperthyroid is more something like uh, you might have uh, difficulty gaining weight. You might have heart palpitations. You have very fast metabolism. That's hyperthyroid. Right. But there's also a condition called Hashimoto's. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Now, Hashimoto's is the most common form of hypothyroid. Okay. So between 70 and 90% of all the hypothyroid cases are Hashimoto's. Now, with Hashimoto's, you go from hyperthyroid to hypothyroid to hyperthyroid to hypothyroid so it's a it's a vacillating TSH and vacillating hyper hypothyroid symptoms so it's so, not quite as simple as okay so you're sort of like swinging between the t between the two right on on what sort of frequency how often perhaps uh, it really depends on the individual but it can be every two days it could be every three months it okay. could be every you know five days it really depends on the triggers. Remember we talked about those yeah. triggers? Yes. Because those yes. triggers are what agitate that immune system and cause that immune system to attack the thyroid, which is called Hashimoto's. Okay. So um, this information here is absolutely um, perfect um, for someone who might um, be having certain symptoms and thinking, actually, you know, you know, this sounds quite familiar. You know, this is what I'm experiencing. Now, it was actually... Um, a coach, a nurse practitioner who suggested to me um, in one of our sessions that I should actually go to a doctor and say I'd like a test for um, this, for a low metabolism, for a hypothyroidism. And when I went and I went through the test, the test actually came back not revealing anything was untoward. Um, why might that be, Dr. Kajiki? And that's just crazy. Uh, the first thing I want you and your listeners to understand is this. There's no way, and I repeat, there's no way, your lab test can be normal and you still have thyroid symptoms. There's absolutely no way. So many times doctors will tell you your lab tests are normal but you still feel lousy. And now they're starting to make you believe that it's in your head or you're the problem. That is absolutely not right. Right. So what's happening is this. The, lab, the doctors either are not doing enough testing, they're not doing the right testing, or they're reading the tests wrong. Mm -hmm. And in socialized medicine, all those are possible. Right. Yeah. And this is an important question because as um, a woman from African descent, um, when um, I've actually discussed certain situations with my doctor, I've been told that if you're um, from African descent or African Caribbean, then there are certain things that show up differently in tests. Um, uh, 
can you tell me if that might be the case for hyperthyroidism, hyperthyroidism? I would have to say that being in Los Angeles, I do not get that much of a African Caribbean population. I, I do get very often African populations, but not African Caribbean. So I can't really comment that African Caribbean has a certain type of characteristic of low thyroid function. Um, I can tell you though that in Los Angeles with the African population that I have, it is no different than the Asian population or the white population or the Hispanic population. Their tests are their tests and I look to see where the abnormalities are and I treat accordingly. Okay, because that question is asked, you see, because I'm aware that, um, for example, um, vitamin D is something that um, people from African or Caribbean descent um, need to supplement in their diet if they're not, you know, if we're not getting en enough sun. And that actually needs to be combined with K2 to, to balance the, the calcium. So, you know, I think in terms of the um, cellular um, biological function, um, that's the reason why I asked the question. Um, you know, as to why my results came back negative when actually I know <laughs> that there was something wrong. So, uh, would, well, yeah. let me ask you this. Well, uh, let me just comment on that. You might be right. I'm, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm in sunny Los Angeles. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah. can tell you that of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lab tests that I've looked at of people in Los Angeles, less than probably 10 people have normal vitamin D levels. Okay, right. Okay. So it, it is a myth. You <laughs> cannot get enough sun to supplement your vitamin D levels to make them normal. You just can't do it, even in sunny Los Angeles. So I even tell people, and I supplement myself, yes. my vitamin D levels with supplemental vitamin D because you just can't get enough from the sun. Absolutely, that's quite correct. Okay then, so let's just move forward a little bit. Um, we're going to take a break in a short while, but before we take the break, I'm going to ask you about um, your practice um, where you're at and how you're able to work with people um, overseas. I see, okay. Um, People get a hold of me through my website typically, which is valleythyroidinstitute.com. And I have developed a protocol where I can treat people anywhere in the world. So I have no more geographical barriers. People do not have to come to my office. They don't have to fly here. We can work with them from the comfort of their home. And that's because most of the testing that I do are home-based tests. I actually send you a testing kit for the hormones, I send you a testing kit for the adrenal glands. For the blood work, I send you a list of tests that you can get from your local lab or local medical clinic or even ask your doctor if they're um, uh, cooperative enough. <clears throat> and then you email me all those results and then I send you through courier service all the supplements that you need, the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes. I email you the lifestyle changes. And then we have a consultation through Skype every two weeks for 30 minutes. And so I can very closely manage your case from a long distance. That sounds fabulous. That's fantastic. Okay. So what we are going to do, Dr. Kajiki, is explore that a little bit more on the other side and discuss your thoughts on the medication and um, why someone um, should choose to work with you. You know, um, I want to hear more about the protocol that you just mentioned there. So let's just have a short break. And we'll be back on the other side. We support your transformation. Stay tuned for more engaging discussion after this short break. Relax in the coaching lounge and engage with compelling motivational speakers. Be prepared to transform your inner world to shape your outer world through empowering discussions. Tune into thecoachinglounge.co.uk now. 
My name is Rebecca Gordon. I'm your host in the Coaching Lounge, and I'm joined by Dr. Kajiki, who is giving excellent information on the symptoms of hyperthyroidism and hyperthyroidism. And now we're going to just touch on the medication and um, a little bit more about how Dr. Kajiki um, can work with you and support you if you feel that um, you've been suffering in silence. So um, let's just talk a little bit about um, the medication because there is the um, synthetic and the, the natural. Can you tell tell our, our listeners something about the medication, what, what the options are, please? Sure. Um, I do want to say that I am a natural healthcare doctor, so I prescribe only to natural methods, a non-prescription. And because I'm not licensed to prescribe medication, um, I can't really give an opinion about an individual what they should and shouldn't do um, or, or dosage. But I can give you my opinion on natural, synthetic, and just tell you from my, pres- my pers- perspective about those. Okay. But m- maybe then I should ask you, perhaps if you can help with this answer then, if somebody say where to go to their practitioner... Um, what might be the default um, the default thing that might be given to them as the way forward with their condition? Okay. So what I found is that practitioners who do prescribe medication, they seem to have their favorite medication. So you'll go to a practitioner and they'll say, I want you to take Synthroid, which is synthetic medication. Or another one will say, I want you to take Nature Throid, which is a natural uh, thyroid medication. Or somebody else will say, I want you to take tyrosine, which is synthetic. What I have found in my practice is that the patients who come in with medication, there is no medication that is the best one. It's individualized up to each person. So natural is not better than synthetic. Synthetic is not better than natural. It all depends upon how your body responds. Right, I see. And what is dependent on how the body responds? What, what, what will create that situation in terms of the body responses? Well, the, the thing is, is that the medication is probably the last thing that we work with people with, with their practitioners. Because my experience is, is this, is that when somebody comes in with a thyroid problem, the thyroid is not the only problem. The triggers the anemia, the blood sugar instability, the adrenal gland dysfunction, the hormone imbalance, the gastrointestinal issues, the inflammation, all those other triggers are the bulk of their symptomatic problem. And because doctors who work with medication don't work on those triggers at all, all they do is they've given the thyroid medication, a lot of these people Mm. aren't helped because nobody addresses those triggers. Well, that's what I do is first is I address those triggers first. We see how well their body responds and then we can hopefully start reducing their level of medication from what they're currently taking. Okay, so you actually get to the root cause as opposed to putting a sticking plaster on. <laughs> yes, and, and yeah. that's what people want. They want the root cause fixed. They don't want just the symptoms covered up. Absolutely, absolutely, okay. So um, I'm interested to know then um, in terms of um, – the, the treatment for low thyroid symptoms, because you've got your particular protocol that you have explained to us, um, how different is that to the treatment for hypothyroidism? Well, if you go to traditional medicine, which is your endocrinologist, your GP, your obstetricians, anybody who who does traditional medicine, your choices for treatment are medication, radiation, and surgery. There's no other choice if you go to traditional medicine. Medication, radiation, and surgery. That's your only choices. If those aren't working for you or if those don't fit your philosophical values, you have to do something else. You have to do another model. Well, that's where I come into play. Chiropractors, nutritionists, functional medicine doctors, acupuncturists, energy healers. We practice alternative forms of medicine. And so when people come to me, now I start working with everything other than medication, radiation, surgery. So I work on their food sensitivities. I work on their adrenal gland dysfunction. I work on their 
blood sugar and stability. So I'll help them change their diet. I'll help them find a customized diet so they don't eat foods that are sensitive to them. I'll help them with their blood sugar surges and their blood sugar swings. I'll help them with their cortisol surges and their cortisol dips. So all these different triggers is how I start treating people other than the medication, radiation, and surgery. Mm. I mean, I'm just hearing what you're saying there. It sounds like someone would get a lot of benefit, a lot of comfort, a lot of peace of mind that um, the underlying causes are being looked at, um, you know, rather than just treating, um, you know, the, 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 the effects and the symptoms, if you like. And we are going to talk about lifestyle, um, managing the lifestyle or adapting the lifestyle. But as you work with people worldwide, um, I've actually been to Romania and um, you knowing that you've worked with people in Romania, you know, across the other side of Europe. Um, I know from my experience of traveling there, people are actually quite healthy. You know, there's a lot of um, organic foods that people eat uh, because of farming still being one of the you know main traditions. Um, can you share with me um, in Europe, um, outside of America, when you've worked with people remotely, what are some of the success stories that you've had, please, Dr. Kajiki? Well, people can actually go on my website and look at the patient testimonials and you'll see people from all over the world, Netherlands, Romania, Canada, um, Australia, New Zealand, but people on the other side of the world suffer the same as people in my hometown of Los Angeles. They've got the same symptoms, you know, hypothyroid, hair loss, weight gain, insomnia, depression, unrelenting fatigue, it's all the same symptoms all across the world. And so How, we, okay, can I just say then, I mean, I've mentioned going to Romania and knowing actually that um, from my experience of being there on a few occasions, you know, people actually do in the main have healthy lifestyles. So what might it be that um, could be the, the, the common variable then, if you like, the common factor? Um, and if you could perhaps, I mean, I was doing some research myself and I came across some information stating that, for example, there are bromides, you know, plastics, um, you know, using microwaves, things like that, that um, alter, you know, um, the, 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 the micro body functions. Um, can you tell me your thoughts on that, please? Yeah, you're absolutely right. There are uh, chemical, you know, sensitivities and different food sensitivities and anywhere you live in the world there's going to be some type of toxicity maybe it's bromide maybe it's chlorine maybe it's lead maybe it's aluminum I mean in Los Angeles we deal with very toxic air and we deal with very toxic water not to mention the hormones the antibiotics that are you know and the, and the pesticides that are in the air and the soil so everywhere you're gonna have that type of problem now my personal belief on that is this. Unless everyone in that same area is getting sick with the same condition, it's really your immune system that determines how sick you're going to get. Okay, I don't believe in the germ theory. I don't believe that somebody can give me a cold or a flu or tuberculosis. I mean, if that were true, everyone in the world would be sick all at the same time. <laughs> So right. it's really your immune system's response to these chemicals, to the bromide, to the chlorine, to the aluminum, that's going to determine how sick that you actually get. Mm, okay, fantastic. Now, um, what we are going to do is just take um, a little short break because I think it's important to digest everything that Dr. Kajiki has mentioned up to now. Um, on the return after this break, we're going to mention um, the lifestyle management and um, look at some of the, um, the, te the, the, the tests that Dr. Kajiki carries out and talk about um, the different services that Dr. Kajiki has to offer. You're tuned in to the Coaching Lounge podcast with Rebecca Gordon. Find out more about us by visiting satellitelifecoaching.com. Dr. Gajiki, 
the information you're sharing is absolutely fantastic. And I must say, um, I'm really, really pleased to be speaking with someone who can give me an alternative perception on, um, you know, something that I personally have been affected by. Now, in my research, one of the things I came across was um, iodine and um, its um, treatment for hyperthyroidism. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that? Is that something that you include in your treatment at all? Wow. Talk about a controversy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes. uh, I can tell you that... Um, I have gone from one side of the fence to just a hair on the other side. So I originally believed that iodine was really unnecessary for the bulk of the Hashimoto's cases. Not hypothyroid, but the Hashimoto's cases, which is an autoimmune condition. I see. I do have research to show that iodine will flare up a Hashimoto's case, but everyone is different. And at least in the Western United States, there is no shortage of iodine anywhere. It's in the soil, it's in the food, we've got it in the seafood. So there's no shortage of iodine in the Western United States. Okay. Before you go on, can I just say in terms of salt, is it that it used to be more prominent in salt, but nowadays it's not? Um, can you tell me the distinction there between uh, that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, <clears throat> iodized salt way, way back in, in, the, in the beginning of the century, we were very short on iodine. We, we didn't know any better. So they, they used to put iodine in salt all the time. Well, now we're so much more technologically savvy is now we have sea salt and we have pink salt and we have Himalayan salt. So yes. with all, all the minerals that are in it now. So we don't really necessarily need that mineralized or iodized salt anymore. We get plenty of that from the foods that we that we salt and from the restaurants of the foods that we eat. So it's not as necessary to iodize the salt now as it was decades ago. Right, okay. But then this does come into the um, lifestyle choices because it's about um, being aware of and identifying the, the, the food sources that um, give us the uptake in the minerals. Right. So yeah, what, what might that be? Well, once again, you mentioned, you know, iodine, you've been very successful with iodine. Maybe you had an iodine shortage. I always fall back on testing. Okay, like many people ask me, well, what kind of supplement or vitamin or mineral do I take for this symptom or this kind of condition? And I'll always say, I don't know until we do a lab test. So if I am choosing to use iodine with somebody, I won't do it unless I have a test that shows me this person is short on iodine. Absolutely, yes, yes, okay. And um, just for the record, that it is to actually seek out the services of an expert, a practitioner, um, who can um, undergo the test with you and um, support you through that process. That's important to say. Right. Yeah, okay. So, lifestyle. You know, you mentioned at the top of the um, conversation that um, your wife, she's a HR, um, you know, practitioner. Um, you know, as women, we have a stressful life. Sometimes it could be said, you know, we're working, looking after children, etc. What does a busy woman need to consider in terms of her lifestyle choices to alleviate some of the symptoms that can trigger um, thyroid issues? One of the first things I will tell busy women who are mothers and chauffeurs and babysitters and wives is this. Take some time for yourself. Okay? Mm -hmm. You don't have to put everyone else first before you all the time. So one of the lifestyle changes I ask my women patients to practice is Take some time every week, an hour, half an hour, 20 minutes, whatever it is, and you schedule me time. And for this time that you schedule, you are not allowed to do anything that you, are, that you have to do or that you are supposed to do. You do only what you want to do. Okay, it's not a time to catch up on chores. It's not a time to take somebody somewhere because you have the extra time. 
it is your time and you must only do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And if that means sitting around, that's what it means. If it means crocheting or reading a book or going out with a girlfriend or seeing a movie or getting a massage or taking a walk, whatever it is. But you have to start putting yourself first for this period of time every week. Okay. And that might be a challenge, you know, to the self really, but um, a challenge to rise to really, because um, without being um, there for yourself, you cannot really be there for anyone else. Right. Yeah. And so that's one thing that someone can do. In terms of, we spoke about the importance of minerals, you know, because we are organic um, creatures, you know, I mean, um, I am aware of the importance of vitamin D, as I've said, um, vitamin K, um, K2, um, selenium. Um, And if I can just discuss with you, you know, years ago, (laughs) you know, we've been told that calcium, you know, you've got to drink milk, you've got to, you know, increase your calcium uptake. But actually... It's about regulating and balancing the minerals within the body. So what's a good way to start um, paying attention to that? (laughs) Once again, good question. If somebody were to say to me, what kind of vitamins and minerals should I take to balance my body out? I would say, I don't know. Their only way to know is to do a test. Okay. So if you really want to know what kind of minerals you're deficient in or overgen, there's no way of knowing unless you do a test and there are very simple blood tests and or urine tests that will tell you but just to arbitrarily go by your symptoms or go by the internet or go by a book or somebody who told you something from the health food store they're guessing and their guess is just as good as yours nobody knows where your deficiencies and overages are unless you do a test Okay. And this is where you come in, Dr. Kajiki. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Right. So you do various lab tests. You've explained that before. And um, someone who's across the other side of the world can contact you, go on your website and make the connection and um, start to begin dialogue with you on how to receive information on getting those tests. So what's the time scale? Um, You know, someone contacted you from England, from the UK, and they wanted to initiate um, a process with you. How soon could it be that they're on the road to improving their situation? Probably within days. I mean, one thing I offer that I don't know if a lot of people do offer is I offer all my inquiries a free 15-minute Skype consultation with me. No charge, no further obligation. And it's an opportunity for you to get a feel for me, get a feel for my style, and it's an opportunity for me to see if you're a good candidate for my care. If you tell me something during this 15 minutes that I feel you're not a good candidate for care here, I'm not going to waste your time or your money. I'm going to be honest with you and tell you, hey, you're not a good candidate for care here. You might want to search out X place. Okay. I'll, I'll right. direct you that that okay, so you can sign signpost someone. How do you determine if someone is, um, uh, you know, the, the best fit who falls into that um, situation of needing some support with a thyroid situation, a thyroid issue? I think it depends on, on what kind of dialogue occurs on that 15 minute phone consultation. I mean, every or Skype consultation, every so often I'll get somebody that says to me, Hey, um, I've been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. I don't want to take any medication. I just want to take care of this naturally. Well, that would be a case where I would say, look, I'm going to encourage you not to do that. I want you to get some co-medical management to watch this cancer. And then you and I will start taking care of the triggers naturally so that you have the best chance of fighting this off. So that would be an example of somebody who I would say, you may not be a good candidate for just my care alone. Okay. Okay, great. And um, if it is that someone works with you, what do you do differently? Well, as we mentioned, if you are in socialized medicine like you are there in, in the UK, your choices are medication, radiation, and surgery. And that's it. Now, if that works for you, great. I'll never get a, a, a phone call or a Skype consultation from you. 
But if it doesn't work for you and you want to start exploring other avenues, understand that there are triggers and autoimmune components about your condition that socialized medicine isn't addressing. And what I would do is through very specific lab testing, I would address those triggers, anemia, blood sugar instability, adrenal gland dysfunction, hormone imbalance, hidden infections, inflammation, and I would address those triggers, create a customized protocol for you with dietary changes, lifestyle changes, uh, vitamins, minerals, enzymes. I find the deficiencies and the overages through different types of lab testing and create a, a customized protocol for you to help mm. you get to the root cause of those problems. It sounds like a very um, comprehensive and um, enriching experience um, where someone can get some comfort in knowing that they'll be looked after very well. Um, so it leads on to the next question, Dr. Kajiki. Um, is this an expensive process to, to undertake? Um, you know, cost varies on complexity of the case. And, and so I can't really give you an average because everyone's case is different. The one thing I don't want to do is lump you into a group and treat you like everyone else. You are individual. You, you need a customized, personalized program for Rebecca, not something everyone else has. So um, I don't know about cost until I've evaluated the case. I've looked at the lab test results and determined how complex your case is. Um, I can tell you that you have to determine how much is your health worth and that will determine whether or not that's expensive to you. Mm, that's a very good um, consideration actually, yeah. Um, without health, there is nothing actually really is there because uh, health is the um, underlying thing that we all need in order to do what we need to do. So um, what is a trend that you're seeing with your thyroid patients, Dr. Kajiki? Uh, I'm, I'm seeing that there is a lot of inflammation. I'm seeing that there's a lot of high blood sugar. There are a lot of adrenal gland dysfunctions. And much, not all, but much of it is from dietary considerations. What people eat, how often they eat, how often they don't eat. Those are three huge, huge components of your health. So um, just to finish off then, Dr. Kajiki, um, what information do you have that patients can access and how can someone be in touch with you? Um, I would go to my website, valleythyroidinstitute.com, and there are three areas that I would look at. One is the patient testimonials. I've got over a hundred different testimonials on there. You're bound to find a patient that has the exact same symptoms as you on there. And you'll find people's success on there varied from 90% better in two weeks to 80% better in three months. So I definitely go to the patient testimonials. I would definitely go to my blog. I uh, write articles at least once a month, sometimes two, three times a month with uh, information like these interviews here. I post these interviews that you could listen in on to and there's tidbits of information that you can go to. And then also go download the free report. I give you a free report that tells you all about the testing that I do, what kinds of thyroid tests I look for, what kinds of uh, uh, triggers that I look for, what the autoimmune component is all about. But those are the three main areas of my website that I would go to. And if that makes sense, then schedule a free 15-minute Skype consultation with me. Okay. And um, during the show, you've said, you know, um, it's important not to just follow what you read on all of these websites that we can find lots of information on. Um, because yes, although it's helpful, it is actually to focus on the place where you're getting the accurate um, information that um, will take you through what's best for you. So on your website, it does sound like there's a lot that um, anyone listening today, um, whether you're in um, America or um, I have a lot of listeners in Ghana, um, in Thailand, in Europe, in um, the UK, wherever you are in the world, it's well worth accessing Dr. Kajiki's website just to find out a bit more um, about anything that you've heard today that you think, um, actually, you know, this sounds like me. Find out more and you'll, you will benefit from a 15-minute free consultation that, um, as you've said, Dr. Kajiki, you know, it's about your health and that is your wealth and that's what's most important. 
I do thank you for your time today in the coaching lounge. What's your final parting words for our listeners, please? Um, as I mentioned, um, you know, don't believe everything you read. And that goes the same for my information. Just because it sounds good, don't necessarily follow it. But one of the things I always tell people is this. No matter what information sounds good to you, when you're starting to implement treatment protocols or doing something about your condition, please get the lab testing. The lab testing tells me what to do. I don't ever advise people on what kind of supplements to take uh, for a certain kind of condition unless I have a lab test. And I would advise you to do the same for anybody else's advice that you see. Okay. And um, just to say then that um, that's also something that um, you can guide people through and you can send the kits off, etc. as you've said. Absolutely, yes. Okay. Fantastic. Well, Dr. Kajiki, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure having you as a guest in the Coaching Lounge. Thank you for tuning into the Coaching Lounge. Join us next time for more insightful interviews with inspiring guests. You can hear previous shows on SoundCloud by searching for Satellite Life Coaching. We're always interested to hear your feedback and topic suggestions, so don't hesitate to email us on info at satellitelifecoaching.com.